Welcome to The Eagle on television. The Eagle is an anti-corruption program that gives us an opportunity to discuss corruption matters that is pulling Nigeria back, a bain to our development, and how we all can come together and fight this monster for a better Nigeria. Thank you for joining us on the program. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Welcome on board this ship. Good day, Nigerians. As we all know, cybercrime is progressing at an incredibly fast pace. It is giving a bad image to Nigeria, affecting our economy, and drilling the youth of this country. Let us work collectively against cybercrime wherever it is committed. I am Abdul Rashid Bawa, Executive Chairman, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Stand for the right thing always. Thank you. We kick off today's program with this. You will agree with me that one major attraction in the public service is the benefit of receiving pension after retirement. But over the years, such prospect has become problematic and uncertain in Nigeria. This situation has worsened the woes of retired civil servants as plans of many have been shattered as well as inducing economic trauma which in some cases have led to fatalities due to the enormous problem in the pension sector. Indeed, many senior citizens who had no other source of earning a living after service had collapsed and died while on queues waiting for their pensions. This is the reason the EFCC is organizing a sensitization campaign into the pension sector in collaboration with key stakeholders in the pension industry to analyze issues affecting pension fraud in Nigeria. Here are details about the program. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in collaboration with stakeholders in the pension industry, is set to organize a two-day sensitization workshop with the theme, Eradication of Pension Fraud in Nigeria. According to the chairman of the commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, the workshop scheduled for October 5 and 6, 2021 at the NAF Conference Center Abuja is expected to serve as a platform for sensitization and practical exchange of information on how best to eradicate pension fraud in Nigeria. Bawa further said the workshop would help highlight the areas of corrupt practices in pension administration and collectively develop strategies to curb the menace threatening the country's pension schemes. Well, it is uh, a sensitization program on the eradication of pension pro uh, fraud in Nigeria. Um, as you are aware that uh, the EFCC has um, three cardinal issues it is pursuing. Prevention, enforcement, and asset recovery. So this sensitization program is an offshoot of uh, our prevention efforts uh, you know, against fraud generally. And uh, we decided to uh, focus on the fraud uh, in pension this time around to be able to bring in all the stakeholders on board, uh, the pensioners, their employers, stakeholders within the pension industry to come and brainstorm. You know, it's um, an interactive session. What are these challenges that we have there? What are the red flags? You know, what are the issues there? Uh, and then we'll be able to work together and come up with a solution to this problem that uh, has uh, devastated uh, pension administration in this country for a very long time. Well, the objectives, as I said, uh, is in twofold uh, or three. One is to bring stakeholders together, you understand, to be able to look at the problems and offer solutions to this problem and to also raise awareness regarding this problem, you know, to the generality of uh, of, uh, of Nigeria and Nigerians as well, as well as, of course, you know, the international community. And of course, the uh, will not stop at there. When you identify the problems, you also work towards solving the problems. So these are generally, uh, you know, the cardinal objective of uh, this sensitization program. The workshop is expected to be graced by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF, Mr. Boss Mustafa, anti-corruption agencies, members of the legislature and National Pension Commission, PENCOM, 
Other participants suspected at the workshop include officials from the Military Pension Board, Police Pension Board, Pension and Records, Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget Office, National Union of Pensioners, NUP, Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, PITAD, Retirement Benefit Advisors, Pension Fund Administrators, and Civil Society Organizations. Ojo Chokutami Eche for The Eagle. The Meiduguri Regional Commander of the EFCC, Onwikwe C. Obiora, has charged the point of sale operators to carry out proper documentation of their clients before transactions are made as means of checking money laundering in the Northeast and Nigeria at last. Obiora gave the charge when he received members of the Association of Mobile Money Operators of Nigeria, Amon, Borno State Chapter, who paid a courtesy visit at the Meiduguri Command of the EFCC. Ojo Chokutami Eche again has the details. Omukwe stated that the number of reported cases regarding fraudsters using the POS medium to launder money and to swindle unsuspecting individuals of their monies is appalling. Therefore, POS operators or stakeholders in the fight against money laundering must ensure they carry out due diligence and adhere strictly to the regulations provided by law. He pointed out that there is need for them to obey the Know Your Customer policy in every financial transaction they make, stressing that this is required by law and enshrined in Section 3 of the Money Laundering Prohibition Act 2011 as amended, and if violated, one is liable to not less than three years imprisonment or pay a fine of 10 million naira or both in case of individual and 25 million naira in the case of a body corporate. The Zonal Commander stressed the need for the association to sensitize its members on the laws guiding their activities as ignorance is not acceptable in law. The Zonal Coordinator of Amon, Hassan Goni Keme, lauded Meidugri command of the Commission for its efforts to sensitize the association through continuous engagements which are yielding positive results. He informed the Zonal Commander that as part of efforts to sensitize POS operators in the Northeast, the association is coming up with a campaign tagged Operation Cleanup, which will ensure compliance of regulations and enhance reportage of fraudulent activities to regulators. Ojo Chokutami Eche for The Eagle. In compliance with the directive of the Federal Government of Nigeria, the EFCC instituted a Freedom of Information FOI unit to make available to the general public any information regarding the Commission and its works. Let's join Ojo Chokutami Eche and our guest, Head FOI Unit of the EFCC, Onye Jefo Obe, in the interview segment for insight into how you can get information from the EFCC. Over to you, Ojo Chokutami. You recall that the Freedom of Information Act was passed 2011 and this uh, response to the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians to know what's going on in all the public institutions. So the act was passed in 2011 and as a I mean, requirement and one of the, the, the goals of the, of the act is to ensure that institutions set up a DEX office in, in their respective um, organizations. So the FOI Act, I mean, the, the EFCC uh, unit was set up in response and in compliance with the FOI Act 2011. Okay, let's talk about the functions of the FOI unit of the EFCC. What are they? Okay, the functions of the FOI unit in compliance with the Act mm. is to ensure that records are properly kept and will respond to requests from the public from time to time. Very often we have responses, I mean, requests for information about our budget, about our personnel, about our activities generally, and we respond to them. But within, we ought to have um, ensure that departments and units keep their records properly and um, make sure that we create online responses and all form of um, such uh, activities that will make sure that the public have access to our records. Okay, if, so if all necessary. The records, all the records actually have to be on ESCC. Yes. The activities of the commission and all that. Yes. We ensure that we ensure that they are, we have proactive proactive um, 
information. And the commission is actually doing that very well. We, we realize that we have um, yearly annual reports. It has a lot of information about the, uh, the activities of the commission. So usually, before the, there's a public request, we make sure that these information is there in our annual report. Mm. OK. Uh, Let's talk about the kind of information that one can apply for. Is it every kind of information that is available to, I mean, for the consumption of the public? No, we usually the public will always want to ask. They want we are, you know, we are um, a law enforcement agency. The public is not aware. Under the Act, we have a certain we have certain exemptions, certain information we cannot reveal to the public. But by and large. Information like our budget, our personnel, about the work in the different departments of the, of the commission, and other activities that we carry out ought to be in the public domain. And I think as far as the commission is concerned, we are really doing well to let the public know. Even part of the, your program that you are doing right now is letting the public know this is a proactive disclosure of what the FYR does. And I know that you go to other departments to, to carry out this particular interview all the time. It is to let the public know who we are, what we are doing, and where we are going. Mm. So those informations, particularly that relates to the requests we've had so far from the inception of the establishment of the unit, has been on uh, how much is our budget, what kind of contracts are we, are we awarding, and all that. Like right now, we have a request that talk, somebody is making a request to know whether senators and House of Rep members have allocation for contracts here. We don't have that. So what okay. we do is you to... You don't have the information. We don't have such information. So well, what kind of information is not available? What kind of information can you not give out to the public? Investigation, for example. Pending investigation cannot be revealed. Pending administrative procedures about individuals cannot be revealed. Mm. So when we have such requests, we make a reply. We respond that we cannot, we don't have that or we cannot give it out based on the sections of the law. Okay, we'll talk about the processes later. Mm. Uh, who can make a request under the FOA Act? Okay, under the Act, mm. the public, Anyone. The, the general public can, yes. And that's the whole essence of, of, of the Act. To no ensure, age limits? No. no, no, no. To ensure that the public has access to your records. And I, I have to tell you that the, one of the most, most outstanding laws to fight corruption right now is the FOI Act. And the simple reason is that it is targeted at combating corruption from the inception. The reason, the wisdom is that when people have access to your records and what you are doing is known and the public is aware and they participate in what we are doing, it to fight corruption, to combat corruption and reduce it to the various minimum. And the commission is really doing that. We, we, we as a fighting, as an, a corruption fighting agency, we have to be at the vanguard to lead the fight against corruption. That is why everything we are doing, we ensure that it's transparent, it's open to the public. Apart from those cases where we cannot reveal pending investigation, certain classified information as, as a security agency, we cannot reveal those ones out. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're coming to the processes now, the different procedures one has to follow to get information from the EFCC. Uh, let's look at the time limit for the provision of information. What is it? If someone applies to get information on, let's say, the budget of the commission, how long should it take at, mo at most to give this information out to the person? Okay, the law provides seven days. Seven days for Seven us. days, yes. including weekends? No, working seven, seven days. Seven working, so working days. And if the application is made, the, the responses must not be in writing. It depends on the nature of the application. If it is something that is quite voluminous, you need consultations with other departments and units, you get back to them. We can make calls, we send mails to them to tell them where we received the application and it's pending and we are working on them. So that's what we do. Within that seven days, we must provide a response. No at, at, yes, activate the response and acknowledge their, and we are doing that so well to make sure that we fall within that time limit of seven days. Um, you, you, there, you go to some offices today and um, you'd have to pay 
for services rendered for the EFCC, especially if, um, when the FOI unit is about to give us a piece of information, what's the cost implication for making a request and getting response? No. If the person, for instance, you'll have to type the document, you'll have to make photocopies and all that, how much should the public pay? No, the, no, the public don't pay anything. We we'll do Nothing. that. We we'll do that for free. Yes. And mm. so, if if you are of the units, and if I apply, I'm an outsider. I apply for information, and I mm. get it within seven days. What is the sanction on you, the officer? Okay, the sanction will be a recourse to the to the court. You have the right to go to court to institute a legal action against such institutions that are refusing not to. I mean, to oblige you with information. The, the, the applicant has that right to do that, and the penalty is 500,000 if found guilty. If found guilty. Yeah, if the refusal is deliberate mm -hmm. and is not based on law, mm -hmm. then you, you can go to court. And the court, the law has provided that you can be penalized with 500,000. I can an outsider reports an officer of the EFCC who mm -hmm. delays or refuses to give information to the DIA? No, no, an outsider cannot just apply to the DIA. You need to apply to the, to, to, to the chairman. If you are making an application, it goes to the chairman. The chairman means to the head, FOI, and then we make adequate reply. So if a request is based on, uh, I mean, staff of the commission, for example, mm -hmm. it's a pending administrative issue, and we don't review that. There's an exemption, we, we say it falls under the exemptions of the FOI Act. What are the steps that um, the public should follow to apply for information? Okay, the public, generally you don't even need it. There's no particular procedure. All you need to do is to write. You write to the organization and then tell them what you want. I want to know whether you, you gave out contract. I want to know what, what was your budget. And most of this information really are in the public domain. If you're asking the commission about our budget, the budget is, we are, we have, there's a budget office. So what we do is to refer you to the budget office, look, we are here, we can give you, but we can decide to refer you to the appropriate body to give you that information, which ensures it better than the budget office gives the information that the commission. As we round off on this segment of the program, Mr. On Jeffu Obi, what's your last word to the general public listening to you right now? Okay, I want the general public to know that we're here. Um, we, are, we are not hiding anything that we are doing. They can reach out to us anytime. Well, phone calls and through letters and mails, and we'll respond to them and we'll tell them what we are doing. And because we intend, our, we are leading right now the fight against corruption and we want other institutions to follow suit what we are doing. So the information, the, the, the message simply to the public is that look, come to us, we have an open hand, open policy, you can see what we are doing any day, any time. Well, as Obe rightly said, the EFCC is transparent and operates an open-door policy, so whenever you need any information from the Commission, all you need to do is write or send an email and rest assured you will be attended to. If you're just joining us, the program is The Eagle, a production of the Public Affairs Department of the EFCC, and we've been discussing EFCC and freedom of information. The problem of governance seems to be a major factor responsible for corruption in many nations of the world. Corruption has dealt heavy blows on many nations including Nigeria and the EFCC, being the leading anti-corruption agency, encourages people to help fight economic and financial crimes by becoming fully involved in government. They can act as watchdogs or as Christians where they think things are not moving right by demanding information from their object of interest. Of course, the Commission leads by example. The FOI unit of the EFCC is ever ready to supply you with information that should go out so you can approach the EFCC and ask for official information for the good of the country. How do you do this? Aisha Gambari tells us how. Before making a request, first look to see if the information you're interested in is already publicly available on the EFCC website. Two, if the information you're looking for is not in the public domain, then you can start making your request by submitting 
an FOIA request to the Freedom of Information Unit of the EFCC. 3. You can make your request in writing, orally, or through a third party. 4. To help the EFCC identify your request, provide relevant and adequate information about the document you're requesting for. 5. Give details about how notices can be sent to you. It may be through a specified physical address or email. You can also specify the format in which you wish to receive the records. For example, printed or electronic. 6. While submitting your request to the EFCC, you don't need to give any reasons why you want the information. 7. Please address your request and all other correspondences to the Executive Chairman, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. 8. Please bear it in mind that there is no specific form to be filled when making a request for information and you do not have to pay any amount of money to get your request to you. Email inquiries should be sent via foi at efcc.gov.ng foi at efcc.gov.ng And lastly, I will advise you to get a copy of the Freedom of Information Act and read it for yourself. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Aisha, for those tips. Follow them and any information you seek will be readily available to you from the FOI unit of the EFCC. Remember Psalm 112 verse 9. The Bible said that when you dispense a gift to the poor. This driver don't go enter another pothole again. You know, and they talk, you don't even look me bad eyes there. It's not your fault. The federal government go award road to some rubbish contractors where we say they don't green do the road. See as road, Jagga Jagga says. Are you? Just one pot to make the complaint. <laughs> Let me tell you, my local government chairman, money when they give us. Oh, guy, now they disturb. It's not to get peace of mind for this boss again. Leave this all this uh, trouble. I can't say I'm going to report us to EMCC. I reach the CQ everywhere. Everywhere just stop. Only me carry myself. Come back up. Theft money. <laughs> my brother. Uh -huh. You never hear of that app where EMCC do what they call Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye. Yes, Eagle Eye. ESCC specially designed this app for people like Una. All you need to do now to download the app on top of your phone. Bring your phone, make I show you. See ya. Oppo. You see? You go either Google Play Store or Apple Store. Open up. Uh -huh. You see, Amba? Eagle Eye. Download the app. As you download the app, upload pictures before you know them will attend to you sharp sharp then design that app in such a way where they say nobody go know say now nah, you even complain on top of that app just like that just like that my brother my people Ego 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 this message is from the economic and financial crimes commission EFCC. And that's how we end today's episode of The Eagle. Do not forget, for matters relating to economic and financial crimes, please send an email to info at efcc.gov.ng. And to speak to our officers, you can call 0809-3322-644 and follow us on all our social media platforms at official EFCC. If you see fraud happening, use the EFCC mobile app, The Eagle Eye, download the app, Follow the steps and report fraud on the go. You can also take pictures of corrupt practices and upload. My name is Aisha Muhammad. As usual, I leave you with this pattern word that says, Freedom is about a way of thinking. Freedom is about understanding that you can do anything that you want. And freedom is about being able to take information and education and make it relevant to your own growth every single day. Freedom is not staying in the box. Freedom is not doing what other people want you to do. It is about doing the right thing always. Goodbye. God bless Nigeria. Please stay safe and be kind to one another.